Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this RecamerTitacom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with a couple of AMD pieces of news, the first one being a whole bunch of new instructions that have popped up in a series of Linux patches for Zen 2. Zen 2 is adding the following instructions, cache line write back, or CL. WB if you prefer, read processor ID or RDPID, write back and do not invalidate cache or it's super simple acronym WBNOINVD. And this is for the GCC 9 feature development as don't forget it does end in November. So AMD have sent out their patches so that it will be supported. We also have an update to the EPIC2 aka ROAM information that we put out yesterday. So yesterday's video we detailed information from Semi-Accurate which told us that there would be 64 cores, that's 8x8 eight eight configuration with 128 threads total. Now this information wasn't super new, in fact I believe it was the website Serve the Home several months ago that first broke this information way way before Charlie and Semi Accurate along with other rumours but there has actually been yet more information that has started to emerge thanks to a series of, from an individual by the name of K.H. Chia and he is a retired engineer now it's but these uh, images do look pretty accurate to what I personally believe we're going to be seeing. You can tell that well we have eight CPU cores and they're in a configuration surrounding the system controller that's why it's known as an 8 plus 1 design. Each of the eight CCXs are linked to the Infinity Fabric which in turn is also linked to the DDR4, PCIe and a whole bunch of other important system stuff. The result is that these processors, at least in theory, will offer incredible performance and will really put Intel under pressure until they can launch Ice Lake. It's going to be interesting to see how Intel manages to uh, survive on the back foot. It is Intel, so I don't think they're exactly going to be hurting for cash, but it probably, at least in the short term, will hurt their sales figures and will certainly give a nice cash injection for AMD. New iPads, iPhones are now a regular event in the industry. No one's particularly surprised by a new launch. Yesterday we heard of a new iPad Pro, but this one did raise a few eyebrows because Apple claimed that the GPU inside this thing is as powerful as the Xbox One S. The system utilizes the A12X Bionic chip and Apple claim it delivers about two times faster graphics. It also has an 8-core processor and a 7-core GPU. Apple said it like this. To put it another way, the iPad Pro delivers Xbox One S-class graphics performance in a product that's 94% smaller. And there's no AC cord required. So how did Microsoft respond? Because, well, you expect them to respond, right? Well, actually, in a very Phil Spencer way. Phil said, and I quote, I like the reference to the Xbox One S in the announcement. Apple stepped up its iPad Pro for some great Xbox to iPad crossplay matches. Nice. So the pricing for the iPad Pro is going to be 800 uh, US dollars for the 11 inch model and the 12.9 inch model is going to cost uh, 1000 US dollars. That's obviously way more expensive than the Xbox One. To me anyway, it's very impressive what Apple have managed to achieve with this tablet. It shows us that mobile gaming is going to continue to evolve and the performance that we're going to be getting out of uh, perhaps the next generation of Switch or maybe the new Scarlet consoles. After all, Microsoft is said to be releasing one version which is going to be a standard home console but also another system which is rumoured anyway to be a mobile orientated system. It should be really cool exactly what the future of gaming holds. Anyway that's just about it for today. Uh, sorry for the shorter video but I've got a lot of reviews going on and I'm also uploading another video today. You can find that link in the video description which investigates whether Nvidia are nerfing the performance of Pascal or not. The answer is no they're not. But we go through various driver revisions and different graphics cards to prove that so if you want to check that out 
you can find it in the video description. With all of that said, thanks very much for watching and all of the support. Normal stuff, you can like the video, which would help us out a lot, and comment on what you would like to see in terms of performance, particularly for the desktop version of Zen. And, uh, well, you can subscribe, which would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can find us on Patreon, uh, Facebook, and Amazon affiliate link and all the normal stuff down in the video description as well. With all of that said, take care. Bye for now.